tons of new players on. Matty O'Grady with the first rebound. And a whistle. Hannah Stelke will get a coaching. The trivia question now has an answer. The first basketball points ever scored at Kinnick Stadium came from the hands of Hannah Stelke. Hannah Stelke, I just love her game. She really came along last year. That's the first two for the visitors. Yeah, we spoke with Lisa Bluter prior to the game, and she said, yeah, she instructed them to. From Michigan, played 14 games last year for them. Man-to-man the -man defense by DePaul. They're just trying to lock up, and they're trying to stay communicative, and that's another thing as well. You're outside, so you really got to let your teammates know when screens are coming or if you're going to switch. Interesting thing to, there's no real way for them to prepare Great. for this. They've never done something like this. As Caitlin Boy, after leading the country our first two seasons with 27 a game. Kate Martin on the drive. And draws a whistle. And what a workhorse Kate Martin is for another year. But Caitlin Clark, it's just effortless for her. Just smooches it off the window for a mid-range runner. And she had two defenders on her. That's what I'm saying. It's like, Get used okay, to it. This is what she's going to do on the scouting report. This is what Caitlin Clark does. It's amazing. <laughs> Can you stop it? Can you contain it? And not too many teams have been finding much success with that. I mean, you think of the NCAA tournament. Nice dive down right there by Peoples. And that's what you do when you see your post player double teamed. Make a hard cut to the rim and get a good finish. Clark tries to do that. And in her face from Allen. Good feet for an elbow shot just offline. And that's why you release up the lane line. Here, Clark is like, I'm not going to throw it right in, but I'm going to commit to to the basketball. And then when they need the sets, and they like to curl her off and get to the rim or get Stulky on the weak side there. All right, explain to me the role Hannah Stulky has to have this year. We mentioned that Monica Sinano is gone. Stulky is a sophomore this year. Last year in her first year in college, won Big Ten Sixth Player of the Year. What do you expect to see from her this season? I expect to see more confidence. I mean, she's only a sophomore right now. She shot 61% from the floor last year, so a reliable piece in terms of production on the interior. But this is an area that she needs to improve upon for sure from the free throw line. She's got to get better there. Shot sub 50% from the line last year, but something that she's been working on. Need Mackerlane and Caitlin Clark pushing it. And Clark played underneath that screen. And Clark's feed to O'Grady. The falter. Yeah, the law firm owned by Clark, but now a couple of new partners to connect with. A great dime right there in transition to O'Grady. Just a perfectly placed pass. That's what happens when you push tempo as well. You force the action, you apply pressure to the defense, and force them to contain and defend. How about Davis blowing on her hands before each free throw? Let's just do, let's do something with the headband and rub that. Take it on. <laughs> She's still rocking that headband. We love it. 50s, but as Christy mentioned, when you're playing at the playground, the double rims, players are right now are blowing on their hands. You have to make sure it's going to be a little harder to catch the ball because your hands are cold, but players are adapting. The benches are actually heated. As you see, Clark. It's freezing there. I remember having to clap my hands together on the catch. You can't really get a good grip on the basketball, and that's what you want as a shooter. Again, Caitlin Clark. Well, Caitlin Clark has picked up right where she left off last year. She led the country in assists last year, but this time it's a reversal. <laughs> it's Goodman to Clark, who takes the nice dive down for the finish inside. And the Vince loves the variety for this Iowa Hawkeyes team. They celebrate the assist numbers that were through the roof last year, led the country in that stat as a team. Caitlin Clark will take a few minutes on the bench right now. She averaged 34 minutes to a give game you line. a gauge. But she was absolutely magnificent. 327 assists, 270 rebounds, and knocked in 143. 57 steals and 20 blocks as well with those long arms. So she's not only an offensive. That's our first three-pointer after six misses from deep from the Blue Demons. Sometimes you might have to put a little more gusto on those long shots. Molly Davis driving the lane last year. In that moment and sharing of that kind of inspiration is incredibly special for sure. Brief break for Caitlin Clark. Her first three is offline. You could. Iowa 
team that won 31 games last year. Team record. I mentioned all the special things that are happening here today. It's going to be something that we talk about throughout the entire show. They, they had a kid native. Can't wait to share her story with you. Just beautiful, and that's a word that Lisa Bluter uses often. Mark at the free throws. So Harry comes to depart from Las Vegas. Well, one of the four true freshmen. Eight newcomers, once again, for DePaul, four transfers and four freshmen coming in. Bounce pass arrived, will stay with Iowa. Hard and stuff with a smile. She has often watched the wave from the hospital windows during football games. Just a delightful girl. Her favorite sport is swimming. She's on the swim team. She's so excited to be here, and she's most excited that she gets to wave from down here up towards the kids. And, and you will see that in three minutes and three seconds as Caitlin Clark drives and draws a whistle. Well, for as much hope and inspiration as we were talking about coming from down here to the hospital window, the inspiration is coming from Christy, right? And her resilience the power that she has to smile through the adversity that she's facing and what a microcosm for life that is and again it's worth repeating every single dollar that the university of iowa makes today is going to the children's hospital let's let's check in with megan McEwen. megan not only is Christy the kid captain for this game, but as the kid captain, she gets to choose the song that plays in the stadium while the wave is happening. So she did choose a song by Pink. It's and, a very and really build on that camaraderie after obviously making that national title game run last year and kind of keeping that good juju going throughout the summer. And so much of this Iowa team is the same from last year. There really wasn't much room for newcomers, be it transfers or freshmen. We mentioned the, the two very important players, starters in, in Warnock and Sinano, that are gone. But the core of this team is back in the mid-range. Boy, O'Grady is all over the place. Let's see the board work. That Stelke run in the floor. Michelle Seedor, another Michigan transfer. Those threes are falling for DePaul out here. Wind, no issue on that side of the floor. Clark thought about it. Second win here. <laughs> she did. Nice steal for 22. Man, you can see how much Caitlin is looking to get to the bigs as often as possible. But just look at her eyes, the way that she surveys. She's just a puppeteer when it comes to what she wants the defense to do and the ease in which she can score the basketball is phenomenal but right here the connection of the dots with Hannah Stokey running the lane on a rim all things started with Stokey right where she is now first points of the game were her getting two years ago was the threes have been falling for DePaul that one well offline Less than 20 seconds to go in the first quarter. Let's see, Iowa likes to get a, a high ball screen and, and late clock action. You see Stokey trying to wait and get an eye from Clark to see when to set it. Clark on the drive! The wave, a tradition that dates back to 2017 when this addition to the Children's Hospital was built in this location. As Caitlin Clark goes down and a little slow to get up. Gives a nod to Lisa Bluter saying she's okay. Look at that sight. The all-time record, a little more than 29,000 fans to watch a women's basketball game. We will find out a little later on this afternoon the official number here, but that record stands no longer. It's a mesmerizing atmosphere, to say the least. There is an emphasis to get O'Grady the ball, and it works. Great feed from Clark. Iowa has been able to do extremely well is play together and play the angles. And look at Clark right inside to O'Grady. Five-point lead for the home team. Clark with 11 points in the first quarter. 
Oh, Grady, quick spin and finish. Clark using O'Grady to drive. She's got the ball straight. O'Grady with another board. O'Grady averaged five minutes a game last year. She is having a sunny start to this game here as the sun makes an appearance here at Kinnick Stadium. Bomb lighting, that's what they call it, right? Bomb lighting. <laughs> the bomb lighting. Nice drive. Sydney a falter. He hit a three earlier. Falter finds O'Grady again. It. Iowa right now feeling very comfortable outside here in the football stadium. Caitlin Clark sizing up the defense and finding her way downhill. Another smooch off the window for Caitlin. And everybody's getting a piece of the action and attacking downhill. And most importantly, sharing the wealth. Sharing is caring here. Whistled her way. Caitlin Gilbert, the grad senior, is on the bench now because that was her third foul of the game with seven minutes and change left in the second quarter. Paul looking for some continuity. New pieces to the puzzle for Doug Bruno. They're sticking with their man-to-man -man defense against Iowa. Flipped over to Kylie Fewer back. More opportunity. More opportunity to compete. Megan McEwen has more on Doug Bruno. DePaul head coach Doug Bruno in a game. He also every year partners with Northwestern University for their autism awareness game. He is all about giving back, and it's not just when it comes to X's and O's and winning, but in the game. He's a Hall of Famer for a reason, Megan. Caitlin Clark unloads from the end zone. Firing up these. 50,000 plus fans. Look at that pass to a falter who finds fewer Bach background as the players are traversing left and right from our point of view. That's a great backdrop for sure. Clark sitting on 16 points. Davis. Well, Caitlin Clark has put on her cape here in Iowa City, knocking down her patented pull-up triple in transition. At least three feet behind the line, no problem. And then the little shrug afterwards for emphasis to let you know, I do this often. 140 made threes for her last year, led the country. I thought what was amazing watching their run in the NCAA tournament Today, was- 7 of 11 from the floor, I mean, absolutely incredible, but she knows who she is. She has five assists as well. We're talking about our offensive production, but it's for the team. It's not just how many points does Caitlin Clark have, has. How many has she produced for the team? And I think those numbers are so incredible as well. So going hit the deep one. And that got off the backboard there a little bit. Tough angle on a baseline shot for that one to drop in. And DePaul has found success from the outside. And the wind, at least at the top of the stadium, between 14 and 16 miles per hour, making lawn sports have been gaining in respect in the last few years. Oh, you've just seen it. I mean, the 10 million viewers at the Final Four last year, the last game that the Iowa Hawkeyes played in, I think there has been more exposure, and I think that's where the respect comes. I mean, you build it, and they will they just do in their respect for the hard work that they have put in. And, and we mentioned that there are the sport is growing and women's sports are growing, but we should talk about this fan base in particular. The entire upcoming season is sold out. Let's repeat that. Every ticket for every Iowa women's home game is gone. It was gone months ago. That is unprecedented. Well, as soon as they went on sale online, it was gone. And I think... She has become an institution in this state. I mean, Christine Grant, I'm sure, is smiling right now at this moment 
to understand that women deserve. Uh, you know, basically, assessment was she was, quote, too Iowanized. She didn't promote herself enough. So she called Dr. Grant the next day and told her that. And she said, no, you didn't, but you should. So on that call, she did. And then she got the job, and the rest is history. How about that? Her story. Traveling inside. It's just been so wonderful to see things come to fruition. Clark with the steal. Iowa trying to push. Up by 10. Clark with a difficult layup and one. Mama, there she goes again. Caitlin Clark getting downhill in transition, connecting with the body and getting the bucket to go. Just a phenomenal finish by the senior. She just gets her head down. She's been in the weight room. She just drives herself right there to the cup in the water. Good She's luck with it. Already up to 20 points this afternoon. I mean, she just goes by two and three defenders. And usually from DePaul, you see a lot of pressing. Haven't really seen a lot of that today, but I think because of all the new players, you want to get acclimated with how you shift and move. Caitlin Clark, knock it off. <laughs> I thought I'd seen everything from Caitlin Clark. I thought I'd seen it all from Caitlin Clark, but I'm wrong. Look at this one. I think they're going to count that. Like she got hit. She's going to obviously head to the line. They did count it. But it was like a delayed reaction. It's almost like she was static right there in the air and then dropped that shot in. Ten schools on this DePaul team. Stokey skies in for the rebound. We have 17 fouls on DePaul today, four on Iowa. 18 fouls on DePaul today. I see Caitlin Clark right here on the previous drive. Just a whirling dervish to the rim and got hit. You hear that whistle, you throw the ball to the basket. And that's exactly what she did on that play. Just the awareness in that moment to do that. I talked to Caitlin, like you said, last week at, at Media Days about this game. She said, you know, we joke about the wind leading to a few air balls, but still, I'm not going to any park to practice about this. She was just going to get ready. The team came out about an hour and a half before the game for their shoot around. That was the only time they had any practice for shooting outdoors. DePaul was a little different. Yesterday, they practiced, they found an outdoor court here in Iowa City between two dorms. They said they only spent like 15 minutes on it, but they did want to spend some inbounds to a falter. So we approach 80 seconds left in the first half. The crossover at Kinnick. Clark sitting on 22 points. Molly Davis. What a Clark with the rebound. Clark with the assist. Not quite. Stelke misses. A falter puts it back, and there's a whistle. This is what Iowa loves to do. They love to push the tempo. That's why they led the country in scoring last year with 87 a game. Molly Davis, headband et al. Okay. Gets that one to go in transition. Watch the little pump fake. Get a birdie to fly by, and then kiss it off the window for good measure. Look at the headband, Mike. Look. You love it. It stays on. <laughs> I don't know how I keep keep messing with her about that. Wait till we do uh, Iowa, Indiana. You'll get uh, Scalia as well, I right? I know both of them. I need to side by side the headband situation. <laughs> get two three pointers so far, at Kinnick today. One second different between the two clocks. So just gonna dribble it out and get a nice final shot of this first half here. Sometimes they run a ball screen to Caitlin Clark, and sometimes she just doesn't need that, Mike. Here's Clark trying to create. Three seconds left. The drive. She'll head to the line. One two step though. <laughs> she had the Euro on the back side of that and almost got the end one. You can tell that's what she was saying to her teammates there. Almost got them. Boy, she is so shifty with the basketball.
First ever crossover at Kinnick. Well, it's a magical moment this afternoon in Iowa City, and this crossover, oh, she's not over there, she's over here. Caitlin Clark, 24 points, seven assists and five boards. Watch this little shift. Ooh, shift and move, freeze them, step it through. She is a spectacular. Halftime, different than what you're used to seeing as well. And then two more quarters of action between DePaul and Iowa as the Hawkeyes take a break with a 15-point lead here at the crossover at Kinnick. The record was shattered there. We expect to find out in a handful of minutes what the official attendance mark is and if it does become a record. Pretty sure the record's been broken. The record of 29,000 is for sure going to be gone. It's packed in here and the sun has popped out as well. So another part of the elements that you have to contend with. Caitlin Clark, the three ball. Kate Martin, all by herself. Brady kept it alive. Well, listen. The sun came out, and I said, hey, you know, the sun's out. It might get in the way and be a distraction. Not for Caitlin Clark. See the flags on the top of the stadium moving. We're told it's around 14 to 16 miles per hour. Clark offline on that shot. The ball was tipped by Gilbert. Here's Caitlin Clark coming off. A little dribble handoff. And the catch-and-shoot ability off a of DHO right there is pretty excellent by Caitlin Clark, the senior. Clark curling around the lane and rocking it in, going to the line. You talked about she's not just a three-point shooter. She's very comfortable driving. No, three-pointers from the outside, three-pointers from the inside. What can Caitlin Clark not do? I mean, her balance and ability to score on all three levels is just different. She's just cold-blooded and Look at, Look at her face. Look at her face. She's hit three threes today. Well, that goes back to what Megan McHugh and Wallace recently married and told us earlier today about how it's bigger than basketball and it really is about the development of these efforts. He can't get it on one end. Rebound to Kate Martin coming on back. Gabby Marshall from deep rattles out. O'Grady, the second attempt goes. Came on strong when she needed to down the stretch in the NCAA tournament, was shooting 50% from three in those six games. Martin strong with the left hand, and I was, we said we'd be a part of something special. Okay. We are witnessing something special. Oh, it's absolutely outstanding. And then when you see everyone cheering and clapping and the wave after the first quarter, I mean, all of it is all encompassing. And, very special indeed. It has it been to see, though, the program continuing to rise and all of the attention it's garnered throughout the country and the world? It's a testament to our program and our coaches and what they've instilled in, in the players that it's more than just basketball. The coaches, they care about you as basketball players, but more so off the court. And that's what really drew me to them. Um, and so I know that she was doing the same thing. And now you can come play in front of 55,000 fans if you wanted to. Exactly. I think we should have every home game here. Courts, maybe. That could help. <laughs> we'll work on it. Megan Gustafson saying we need some heated courts. We needed some games in February. Maybe a Big Ten matchup could be fun, guys. <laughs> Something worth considering, right? Depending on how successful this game has been. Come loads of deep on offline. Gustafson. Such a great player in her just career. 88 more points for Clark, and she will become the all-time program leader in scoring. Oh, just phenomenal. Megan Gustafson, obviously player of the year. She was the Honda player of the year as well. Timeout on the floor as Iowa has stretched the lead to 22. Caitlin Clark with the sun shining down upon her. Uh, every time the sun comes out, it seems like that brings out the best in Caitlin Clark. She nails her third triple of the afternoon. Just phenomenal in terms of her ability to get set and release it up high and knock in another moon ball for the Hawks. Second in the country and assists her freshman. I mean, just an incredible start to an already amazing career. Here's Molly Davis. No doubt. That headband staying stuck. Getting that steal. Bach. Today, and that's what Lisa Bluter calls man-to-man -man defense. And you've seen them mix it up a little bit. Seems a 2-3 zone as well this afternoon. 22-point lead for the home team. Less than four minutes to go in the third. 
Going back to what Megan Gustafson was talking about, Jan Jensen, and how she has been post able doctor. to. <laughs> hey, I have to, I have to give some love to the post on that because, you know, for as much as the game has become five out and extend the floor and take a high volume number of threes and get those paint threes up and in, there's a lot of work to be done down in the post. You can see right there. I love that <laughs> because Lisa Bluter had her while she was coaching, so Te it counts. 26 and nine months. <laughs> and nine months. She's been with Lisa Blue. Tag that on. <laughs> all the mommies out there, shout out to all the mommies. <laughs> we know what that is. But that's just so sweet that she's able to now be on staff with her mom. And to see her in that powerful leadership role, it must do something for her as well in terms of being proud. Iowa has really been impressive as well. As we said, they led the country in assists last year. 20.9 assists per game and also led the country in scoring with 87 points per contest. And when they played overseas in those three games, 110 points on average, but they beat teams by 68 points on average. And McCabe comes up with the ball on the other end. The dish to Davis, the three. The Iowa Hawkeyes, they've done it on the defensive end, and they've been able to push tempo on the offensive side, filling all three lanes. A paint three right here in transition. Molly Davis and her headband. Lisa Blue is going to tap her on the top of the head right there to say, that's how you do it, Molly. Just pop it in. Feet set, ten toes down. Great dish by McCabe on the kick out in transition. And all struggling. They've basically lost their top three players on offense to injury for the year, and yet keep humming along. They're in line to win that West Division once again. Good things happening here in Iowa and all sports, and it's just it's just fun to watch the support as well. You see some of the men's basketball players, men's basketball staff here as well. Clark passed up the three to feed. Paul's going to put on a press. We've seen that a couple times today from them, not a heavy one. For as much as Iowa has been knocking in some threes as of late, I mean, they've had a huge advantage on the team. Clark with the board. She's running. She's been looking to feed her young teammates in the post. DePaul has 46 points total. It's Iowa third sides in their quarter court sets. And now here's some of that press. It's just man to man, so you get it in and clear everyone out. Paul's Caitlin Gilbert now has four fouls. There are three Blue Demons with four fouls. Martin posting up. And that tough shot from the grad senior. They refer to her as the mother hen of this Hawkeye's nest. Well, Kate Martin is the glue, and right here you see her post-up game is strong. Jan Jensen, she works with the post players, but that's everybody. Everybody gets that level of work on the inside, and you have to have your fundamentals set in stone when it comes to your footwork, your timing, your ability to hold off the defenders behind you and hold your seal and lock that in. Caitlin Clark said she had to do a little convincing to Kate Martin to get her to come. Bluter arrived the year after in 2000. Now you love to see the camaraderie and respect with coaches. We have one quarter to go. Here the statistic that stands out most is 55,646 people here to watch it. By the way, you can see the sun falling just behind the press box. So there is actually a little bit of a shadow where Caitlin Clark is moving up just on the right side where Gabby Marshall is. There is a little difference between sun and shade, like a baseball game in mid-afternoon in the summer. Double numbers. Allen now up to six points. Caitlin Clark, no. O'Grady, no. 
Martin with a good look. Foul on O'Grady. The ball she's developed you as a guard. What did she teach you that really allowed you to take your game to the next level? She really coaches a team game and she teaches you how to win as a team. So she just teaches you all the intangibles and she puts you in position that su to succeed as your game. Women in sports. Well, Christine Grant started it. But Lisa Bluter has galvanized the energy behind this team. And you've and seen else until you lead yourself first. But they are leading themselves and then as a group are leading each other as a team to success. You look at just this sport, how attendance has risen. Just in this league, Iowa broke the conference record for attendance last the WNBA, year. WNBA, and you know, you saw Megan Gustafson played for Dallas, the Dallas Wings, the Washington Mystics, and now currently with the Phoenix Mercury. And, and maybe Clark could you know, be the next to go to the WNBA. Meanwhile, DePaul has Allen inside and Clark with the board. Look at those long arms by Clark. You forget about that, and that's why she averaged seven boards a game last year. She's she easy work. Nine. This is not something they're going to walk their way through, so these last few minutes could be interesting. Absolutely. If you play pickup, you don't want to get off the court because you won't get back on. <laughs> you got to stay on the court and play. Back-to-back -back layups missed for Clark. There's a steal for Iowa. Sydney Falter right there and feeds 22. Well, the easiest bucket. Yeah, Peoples. This is a different DePaul team. They are dominating this fourth quarter. And they've applied full court pressure, and that's been the blueprint. Gabby Marshall with the trickling down to how they lead one another in that way as well. Marshall sure did get hot. Her last nine games of the regular season, she shot 61% from deep. Yeah, and they needed it down the stretch. Made that run to the national title game. Defeated South Carolina in the semifinals in the final four and broke a 42-game win streak from South Carolina dating back to the previous season. Clark with the ball. Phenomenal read defensively, staying loose on the post and jumping around in the passing lane. Crisp passing from the Hawkeyes. Timeout to Paul. Well, it's just beautiful basketball, starting with the defense. Staying nice and loose, getting into the passing lane for the steal was Caitlin Clark. And then the behind-the-back pass right there by Kate Martin. And then the dime down to Hannah Stolke, the sophomore. But look, she's going to draw two defenders, draw two, C4. And she saw the one that was going to pay it off. I, just, I loved playing overseas. I played over there for three years. I was in Italy as well, in Castilla. The pizza there that the Iowa players made, I'm sure it was delicious. It was just a little different than here, but I tell you, the authenticity of making your own food and having it in those wood burning ovens and, and all of that. But for Iowa, they were over there and they were a machine. I mean, they beat their, those three teams on average by 68 points per game. And they were just doing their work, and you, you'd love to see that. Let's go over to Megan McEwen. The impact of Caitlin Clark globally is wild. I was on my honeymoon in Italy this summer. Our tour guide asked me if I knew Caitlin. get married? What is going she on here? <laughs> You're so funny. But yeah, this is a phenomenal summer for, for our colleague. But to, to know that the game has gone global that way, and a lot of WNBA players play overseas. And there it is. And Approaching 90 seconds left here in Kinnick Stadium. A scare from the pit. is just palpable. They are just on a string on both sides of the floor. Martin. Two more. The feed from. No question about it. I mean, the leverage from last year's run of seven teams going to the NCAA tournament, and then three of them setting a record for Big Ten women's basketball and making it all the way to the Elite Eight, and of course, Iowa going to the Final Four for the first time since 2015 for a Big Ten team and to the championship game from there. And Mackenzie Holmes at Indiana. I mean, they're just you just go down the list. I think it's 10 of 11 of the players in the conference return.
They've seen 519 Iowa football games here. They have now seen one Iowa women's basketball game here. Simply spectacular. 55,646 Iowa Hawkeye fans in attendance as they shatter the all-time record for attendance.